You ever notice that the establishment press, the mainstream media's narrative, often aligns with state interests? Fox News doesn't follow this trend, you know, for some reason, and they hate Fox News for this. Fox is an outlier. And now we can see how this actually trickles into social media, running in much the same way. Fox and Friends host Pete Hegseth is banned from Twitter after sharing anti-American manifesto of the Pensacola, Pensacola shooter. It goes beyond just Pete Hegseth because apparently shortly after, we have this one from the Post Millennial, Mike Cernovich and Andy No were also suspended from Twitter. Now, my, now Pete Hegseth said he was banned. My understanding is that Hegseth was suspended and he was forced to delete this tweet. Now, Pete Hegseth, I wouldn't necessarily call a journalist, but he is a media, news, and politics personality. He's a host of, uh, he's one of the co-hosts of Fox and Friends. So for him to use a high-profile account to share important information, I think is warranted. We're here. We're, uh, we're, we're literally at the point where social media companies are banning journalists. You might not like Andy No or Mike Cernovich or Pete Hegseth, but come on. They're disseminating factual information about relevant matters. It's, I can't say it's strange to me that we have a Saudi national who committed an act of terror. And now when people try to point that out, they get suspended for it. It's very dangerous to the American war machine. You see, it's not, it's not so difficult today to criticize the war in Iraq or Afghanistan, Syria. Don't question Saudi Arabia, though. My understanding, too, is that there's a Saudi prince who has a, a, a substantial investment into Twitter as well. But I don't, I don't know. I guess that doesn't matter, as people say. So let, let, let me read you the story from uh, the post-millennial. And uh, man, I'll just tell you, you know, it's, it's, it's getting bad. For those that didn't follow, after the uh, uh, whistleblower story from the Ukraine scandal, his name was going around. The name was dropped. I had a video on YouTube deleted. Uh, I should say it was forced private, meaning YouTube locks it so that no one can see it. Can't do anything about it. Video's gone. Yeah, I can repost it. But the YouTube algorithm will punish me if I do. So no, that's not a good idea. The video is gone. It's on BitChute, I'm pretty sure. I also was suspended from Facebook for posting the Politico article that was saying straight up, it is a good thing that the New York Times outed the whistleblower. We're at this point now where unless you're an establishment player in the press, they'll they'll just ban you. And, and And Fox doesn't count, as we can see. There's a lot more I want to cover. But I want to give you this, this important information first. And um, apologies again to everybody. Um, I know I said it several times, but it, it bears repeating. I had a root canal recently and painkillers don't seem to do anything. So they say, following the Pensacola Navy base shooting, having been deemed a terror attack, multiple journalists and media personalities have been suspended from Twitter for reporting details on the shooter. Filmmaker Mike Cernovich, the post-millennial editor at large, Andy No, and Fox host Pete Hegseth, are among those who have been suspended from Twitter for utilizing the, the uh, they say utilizing the manifesto. But that's not true. My understanding is that Mike Cernovich and Andy No tweeted links to stories about it. They say both Cernovich and Hegseth were suspended for posting excerpts. Okay, so there you go. Of this, of, of, of his social media, which included disturbing posts indicating the shooting was motivated by anti-American and anti-Israel sentiments. Now, my understanding as well, this, this guy in Pensacola tweeted these things out. So perhaps Twitter is terrified that people are going to find out this was hosted on their platform. They might get the gab treatment. Andy Noah was suspended pending he delete a tweet, which included a copy of the manifesto, the copy of it, which was made public by Sight, a non-governmental organization that monitors white supremacist and jihadist terror. They say, while Cernovich's account was restored following the removal of the offending tweet, Pete Hegseth and Andy Noah's accounts remain suspended appeals unresponded to by Twitter as of yet. According to the Twitter terms of service, promoting or providing media intended to further a terror organization's goals is a violation of the platform's policies, leading to an immediate permanent suspension, even for verified journalists. Take that into consideration. I'm going to show you just how bad things truly are. However, the terms of service also state the discussion of terrorism for clearly educational or documentary purposes does not constitute a violation. Why then did Twitter remove these journalists? They say, update, a Twitter spokesperson responding to the post-millennial advised that Cernovich, No, and Hegseth had been suspended for posting the manifesto. However, neither Cernovich nor Hegseth tweets included the manifesto. Twitter declined to answer any further questions on the justification 
for their suspensions. You know, I think I can tell you exactly why, the, you know, well, I can't tell you exactly why. I'll tell you, I'll speculate. For one, this guy used Twitter. I think Twitter is terrified of the, of the PR hit and the stock drop, so they're going to ban journalists outright. Welcome to, welcome to our new future, man. You're not, journal, journalism is being strangled by these big networks, by Google, by Facebook, by Twitter, etc. These companies are playing ball to get access. And now we have, we have a media that I guess you could just call bought and paid for. Not in the sense that someone from Twitter or the government walked into those, you know, you know, those, those news outlets and handed them cash or anything like that. Although maybe, I don't know. Uh, what we have is, if you tow the line of what, the, you know, the intelligence services and the establishment, you know, politicians want, you're good. You're absolutely good. When you challenge the machine, when you challenge the establishment, or when you threaten the bottom line, you're out. I want to show you a post I made on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do it. I don't post that often, but sometimes I do. And when I do, they're spicy. Check this out. Same screen, different movie. I believe that is attributed to Scott Adams. Very brilliant quote. On the left, you can see a Benny Johnson tweet as retweeted by Sebastian Gorka. Uh, Benny Johnson is a conservative uh, personality. I believe he's a journalist. I don't want to, uh, I, don't, I don't like giving people titles, trying to describe people. It's hard. John Harwood, CNBC reporter. You may notice these two tweets are about the exact same thing. The only problem, they say exact opposite things. This is very similar to another post that was going viral with the two TV screens where C- uh, CBS said that Gordon Sondland confirms quid pro quo, which is f- factually wrong. And Fox News saying, Sondland confirms no quid pro quo. The reality is Gordon Sondland said he presumed one. He did not confirm one. Confirmation technically would require three sources. And just because one person says, I felt like it was, doesn't provide proof it was. On the left, Benny Johnson says, Ted Cruz nukes conspiracy theorist DNC activist Chuck Todd. Chuck, Ukraine was trying to get Hillary Clinton elected, which is what the media wanted. Ukraine meddling is inconvenient for your narrative. Dems have no evidence of a crime. Now you're working for Adam Schiff. On the right is John Harwood of CNBC, which is supposed to be the trustworthy establishment press. Ted Cruz disseminating propaganda fabricated by the Kremlin to weaken the United States. Mainstream press, MSNBC, CNBC, and many other journalists, you know, CNN, are claiming the Ukraine narrative is Kremlin propaganda. The only problem is they wrote it. They wrote it, now they regret it, and they've got to walk it back. So look, I, I told you about what happened with Hegseth and, you know, Cernovich getting banned. They are going to ban people because it is inconvenient for what they want. The establishment, media, and, and Democrats seem to be one and the same. Here's what I posted. Journalists right now are literally screaming at us not to trust them. The story about Ukraine meddling was from the New York Times. Were they pushing Kremlin propaganda? Or are they lying now? Either way, these journalists are screaming in our faces, quote, do not trust the press. Let me, let me, let me elaborate on this. The New York Times reported in December of 2018 that a Ukraine court uh, concluded, ruled that Ukrainians were meddling in our election by releasing dirt on, on Trump campaign's Paul Manafort, forcing him to resign, ultimately resulting in him going to prison. I believe he went to prison. Um, so this is the New York Times telling us this. We all saw it. Now they're trying to gaslight us. They're trying to say, don't believe it. It's fake news. But you were the one who told us this, man. We can't go on this way. We can't. I tell you what. Eventually, we, we, we are going to be in, in a world where only people like John Harwood, these, these deceitful uh, liars, are, are, you know, of confirmed press. We're going to see people like even Fox News personalities like Pete Hegseth getting banned, suspended for telling you what really happened. See, I think the big problem with what No, Cernovich, and, and Hegseth posted, more importantly, was that this guy in Pensacola was a Saudi national. I'm proud, this, this, this video, will pro- I would be surprised if this video gets a strike on it. They do not want to jeopardize our strategic alliance with Saudi Arabia. You can, you can talk, you know, Trump comes out all day and night and says the war in Iraq and Afghanistan was a waste of money, and then, and then what? Gives money and weapons, troops, Saudi Arabia? We can see how the game is played. It is very, very important that the U.S. remain allies with, with the Saudis. And because of this, that's what, that, that's, that's, that's what happens. They'll ban you when it comes, you know, when, when this information comes out. Now, the problem is we still got to deal with these people. You know, what happened in Florida was nightmarish. 
And we've got to deal with him and his friends and the other people who are doing these, these, committing these atrocities. If you're a journalist who wants to report on that, and it could be damaging to the war machine, they will pull out all stops. But I will add, they're, they're, they are truly, truly becoming desperate. You know, what we're seeing from Adam Schiff, and I'm not saying they're all one and the same. I'm just saying the Democrats and, and the war machine have an aligned interest. You know, it's the, it's the establishment. And I think it's more like this. You know, you have people, oh, man, my eye. Sorry, eyelash. You have people who just want the keys to the castle. These are politicians who will do and say whatever it takes to win so they can sit in the comfy ivory tower, have that money, be in charge. And that means they don't want to rock the boat. So when the, when the military established, you know, the military industrial complex, the intelligence agency says, says we're going to do X, they go, yeah, 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 do your thing. I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get involved in that. But there are some people who say no, and that's wrong. And we're going to stop you. There are some journalists who want to challenge that, put a stop to it. Well, they'll block you. They'll, they'll, they'll ban you. They'll smear you. They'll lie. It's, it's, it's actually a shocking, uh, a shocking level of deceit we're seeing here. It's, it's, it's remarkable to me in that the, the, the journalists themselves, Politico, The Hill, The Examiner, The New York Times, they've all repeated the Ukraine meddling narrative. Now that Republicans are on, are on board and saying, we got, we got to take care of this, and, they, and the Democrats and, and the media establishment are realizing it's hurting them, they flip. They start claiming their own reporting is not true. Politico has written two stories trying to debunk its own reporting, just retract it already. They can't. They can't because it's true. And we all know it's true. Now, did Ukraine engage in a top-down, systematic manipulation of the U.S. elections? Of course not. But they're going to they're gonna straw man. So this is what Chuck Todd does. He says, you think that Ukraine meddled? <clears throat> and Russia didn't. You catch that last part? He goes, Russia, you, you think Ukraine was meddling? And Russia wasn't. That's the game they play. Ukraine was meddling. Russia was meddling to a much more substantive degree from a top-down approach. And we know it. We know it. Um, I, I, I would say it is, you know, I'm, I'm one to demand evidence from everybody, including the government. But we have more than enough evidence from uh, ha- admitted hackers, private companies, and the government, as well as, you know, uh, the news media. That shows in all likelihood, yeah, Russia was doing this, man. It was. Were they successful? According to the Mueller report, not really. They didn't have as big of an impact as many people want to believe they did. Ukraine had an impact. They got Paul Manafort locked up. I believe he was locked up. Uh, they, they had, he got him removed from the Trump campaign. So they did. There was damage caused. But to act like Ukraine was doing nothing now, you can clearly see that these, you know, Axios wrote the other day, that Donald Trump is using this as a defense to claim there's corruption. And it's like, but, but it, was, it was the press that said this. So I'll tell you what, man, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, we can't trust them anymore. And, and I don't know where that leaves us. The press is bought and paid for. They're political operatives. Vice News announced they're hiring an Obama White House appointee to the press, a former Hillary Clinton staffer. There you go, man. It's depressing. I'm going to keep this one short. I'll wrap it up here. Um, man, um, I, I, I'll stress it again. I know you guys probably don't care to hear this, but, uh, you know, I got a root canal a few days ago and it has been, it has been brutal and today is, is, is pretty, pretty bad. So we'll see if I can make it through. Um, but, uh, I apologize. Anyway, stick around. I'll see you all at 1 PM on this channel. Thanks for hanging out.